Good morning. It's currently 6 a.m. Wednesday, the 22nd of February, and I have some urgent news I need to tell you. I'm fully funded. What? Isn't that nuts? Woo, 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 woo. It's crazy to think about how this whole thing started. How I, I had this crazy idea to go on this trip, and then I found it, and then I got accepted, and then it was like, you have to raise $16,000. <gasps> it sounded impossible. It totally is like the thing of, we serve a God of impossible things, and when you reach for the impossible, and he says go for it, you can go for it, because he provides the extra gap there. I'm just, yeah, I'm just so thankful. Thank you so much. Because of you, all of this can happen. And it's incredible. <sighs> of course, by the time y'all see this, it will be way past, because I even, I have so many videos I need to upload by this point that, yeah, that's just ridiculous. But I have some other things I want to talk about real fast. So the world race is a giant adventure, to say the least. And things happen that we can't control. Sometimes God takes us on a journey the long way around to really get us to where we want to be and where he wants us to be. And in saying that, uh, Deb has went home because of things she can't control. Her sister, in giving birth to her fifth child, um, something happened with the brain, and they didn't know if she was gonna make it. So, Deb flew home. It was the right choice. We all prayed and got behind her and said, whatever you do, we are totally, we believe in you. So, yeah, go for it. Since that time, her sister's woken up, but she suffers from memory loss. And Deb is taking charge, helping out the family, and helping out, taking charge of five little kiddos. And that's exactly where she wants to be. It's just sometimes it's hard giving up things like this to go to something better. And I think that's exactly where God wants her. And Deb, I'm gonna miss you. We became fast friends in those short little minutes. Even though we were never on a team together. Deb, you're gonna do amazing things wherever you are. So, here's a shout out to you. All right, Deb, climb the thing. I'm climbing the thing. <laughs> Friends. I'm borderline hangry. One, two, nine market. Three, nine market. Yes. You're gonna tell them how much you love me and how much you're gonna miss me. Yeah, Deb, why you gotta go? I have to go take care of my family. That's a good cause. Thanks, Caleb. That's worthy. Appreciate it. You'll do great. Thank you. I'm gonna miss you, though. I'm gonna miss you, too, man. Your directional skills are really poor. Dude, you're cool. <laughs> Frosted tips would be great. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit Malawi. It's gonna You're be frosted really just tips. Talked about frosted tips. Yeah, the 90s are coming back. <laughs> this is my morning face. This is what I look like in the morning. I've got morning voice still. I haven't even taken a shower yet. So um, we're leaving for Vic Falls today. So I want to make sure I shot this early. But there's one more story I want to tell you about our time in Bingo. The camera isn't always rolling. I don't really have it on me all the time. And there's some insensitivities that, like, you just don't want to do. Don't want to carry it around. But this is a story that really was near and dear to my heart and really kind of defined our time in Bingo. With the new team, we kind of set team directives. Like, we want to be a team that listens to Holy Spirit, that, like, really goes out for things. And for me, I've been kind of been putting off some things like praying for healing. And I knew that's just something I wanted to do. And here's the time. Month five, get uncomfortable, push for new things. So part of our ministry in Bingo was doing home visits. And I wrote a blog about this, link down below. So I go to this home visit and it's two African huts. And uh, we get out of the van, Mariah takes point, 
And you know Mariah doesn't have anything to say, which is kind of odd, because she keeps repeating the phrase, we're here to show you God's love. And I was kind of thinking to myself, what does that even mean? We have two widows, a bunch of kids around, not even properly clothed. What can I do? What could we do? We can't really provide for their needs or the physical needs. I don't know their emotional needs. That takes much longer time than the 10 minutes we're there. And their spiritual needs, like, well, when we asked what to pray for, they said nothing. They were just happy to have us. And I, I didn't know what to do. So I'm staring down at my feet. And I see this woman's foot, got a giant tumor on it. And then I see another pair of feet. And literally, I don't know where she came from, but a blind woman shows up out of nowhere and asks us to come pray for her house. And I get this stirring in my soul that says, what are you gonna do now, Caleb? And so Mariah looks at me expectingly and says like, what are you thinking? And I'm like, ah. there's literally no risk. If I pray, nothing happens, nothing happens. We're no longer, we're no better, no better off than where we were. So go for it. Two, you said you were gonna do this, so go for it. And three, uh, when else are you gonna have this opportunity? So go for it. Yikes. So do me ask who wants to pray. I step out, I ask her if I can pray for her sight. She says, yeah. So I get down at eye level. We're both on our knees, I take her hands, and I pray like blind eyes be open. Some other teammates of mine jump in, and uh, nothing happens. So it's been raining a lot in Zimbabwe. The most has been rained in the last 30 years. And her roof is leaking on her. So we all gather around the house, and we pray, all right, no more leaky roofs. Got it? God is a God of impossible things. I believe this is something he could do. Right? Power of prayer. And then we get back in the van and pounce. We show up a week later, no change. Roof still leaks, she's still blind. All right, so now we start asking, okay, how much does a new roof cost? We can at least purchase that, move it forward, we can build it for her, we can be the tangible change she needs. We get an estimate. There's a man who lives on our property as well, probably a family relative, but he's not there right now. He built the house, so we need to get his permission to see if how they can help out and we can figure this thing out. Okay, so we need this man. So we come back, so the property looks like this. Her house is here, his house is back here. She has like a s cylindrical house. He has a square house made with bricks. Hers is with like wooden pylons and straw hall. So we leave, we call back a couple times. He hasn't shown up. Our last day in Binga. We don't really know what to do with this. We want to move forward, but we don't. We haven't gotten any signs. So we've prayed for her twice now, and both times we've shown up, and nothing's happened. So we show up, and we almost think we show up in the wrong spot. Like something's wrong. Something's different. And I look down, and where her house would be is now a pile of ash and rubble. Her house had burned down. God, when I pray for things, I don't expect them to get worse. Like, uh, yeah. what? Huh? I, did, I was, we were all flabbergasted, kind of shocked. And now she's not only she's not by herself anymore. She's also taking care of take. She's also now taking care of her granddaughter. Yikes! All right. So I asked the question, like, do you believe in Jesus? Yes, she does. Emily asks, who is Jesus to you? She gives an answer, and then. And we're like, well, can we, can we pray for you? We don't really have any words at this point in time, so we kind of put something together. And then I ask, can you pray for us? Because her faith was way more than ours. I feel like this is just an acknowledgement of who she is as a person and humbling ourselves to her, like, no. You want us to pray for you? No, no, you should pray for us. So the translation of her prayer went something like this. I can't see the color of the grass, but I know it's grass. I can't see the color of the dirt, but I feel that it's dirt. Jesus, I'm content in everything you give me, and I'm happy with everything you've done. Who are we? <sighs> wow. So, I don't know what the plans are going on, or how we're moving forward with this. 
the thing that sucks about the world race is that we leave after 30 days. I'd love to stay longer and like really work some things out or like get to know people more in depth. But we're constantly pulled from this and that and doing things and yeah, mission work is not easy. If I'm doing anything with this, that story, I will link it below. Please follow along. Um, maybe there's something else we can do, but I don't know. So we've arrived in Victoria Falls now, and I think I didn't want to complete that thought I had earlier. Just want to say like, sometimes when we pray and things don't go exactly right, or what the thought about Deb, just like, the, the fact that sometimes things don't happen the way we want to, doesn't mean that God's not in them. And sometimes we only have like a small picture of what's going on in the present moment. But as we look at things from a broader perspective, we can see more of what's happening. And that's something I'm learning, right? We want to see things happen now. And we have that mindset of like, the instant gratification need is just something I'm still wrestling with. And so to see something happen not the way I want it to, or our dreams are met through different means, or we have to go the long way around, I think God's in it all. And it's something we just have to wrestle with and deal with. Um, on that note, I don't know what I'm doing with this channel. I want to see myself grow. And I've looked in the past and I can see how much I've grown. And I want to move forward. I just don't know where I'm going. So this big adventure, kind of like life, is I walked into the dark forest and I don't know where I'm going. But just in this small moment, I know it was only so much and that God has something bigger and then there is something, a bigger picture that is being painted um, through all of it. And so yeah, uh, we're gonna spend a couple days here before we hit Zambia. So that's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna go see the falls, do some real cool things. You keep doing what you're doing. I'll see you on the flip side.